Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about wiring the Aranko S series control panel. And uh, before we get started on that, I just wanted to kind of talk about the changes or some recent changes that were made with this particular panel. Um, Aranko has redesigned uh, the way the panel is wired so that it's a little bit more of a straightforward wiring situation. Um, so I just kind of wanted to briefly go over that and uh, make sure that if you are wiring one of these panels up that you've you know which version that you've got so that you're following the proper instructions in terms of how many wires you need to pull from the splice box and, and how you're going to configure the splice box and and all of those important details so we're going to be primarily focusing on the new Arenko control panel those new Arenko control panels became available after April 1st, 2018. So any uh, panels that were, are shipped from the manufacturer um, are going to be the new ones. So not to say that there's not tons of the old ones out in the field and, and so forth, but they're going to become a lot less common to be installed new, which is what we're focused on with today's video. Um, so briefly, uh, just to kind of summarize it, the the biggest difference that they have here is now in the new panel you're landing all six of your float wires as opposed to before you had to uh, create a common in the splice box or with the way that we did it we would create a common inside of the panel down here so you just kind of had a rat's nest of wires down here but at least it was easily accessible um, and then with the old panel, as I mentioned, let's see if I can just kind of pull this over here for you. Um, you've only got you've only got five spots for your floats, and uh, so that's where that common came into play to pair that number of floats down and so forth. So this is a little bit different, but it is a little more straightforward. In addition to simplifying the uh, the approach to getting these panels wired. Um, they've also simplified the support documentation. So whereas uh, before they had a wiring diagram, a splice box arrangement diagram, um, and a float arrangement diagram, and you had to use all of those to figure out kind of what was going on. Um, now they've condensed everything down to a single wiring diagram where you've got your float arrangements down here, uh, three float, two float. Uh, you've got your circuit options which would be one circuit or two circuits we're going to show you one circuit today uh, because two circuits is a little more straightforward and one circuit requires that you use uh, some pigtails in the panel with some wire nuts uh, so we're going to show you that one today that's what i was saying in addition to that the uh, the splice box diagram is basically not needed anymore because you're running all of the floats all the way into the panel there's no fancy footwork needed in the splice box to get it up and running so kind of simplified things there as well also before we get started i just wanted to mention that um, we will be running the wires directly through these holes in the bottom of the panel uh, keep in mind that is not the proper way to do it uh, but due to the wide variety of codes on seal offs and and the proper ways to enter a panel uh, we're not going to show that part because i wouldn't want to mislead anyone because from area to area it's going to change um, so we're just going to for simplicity's sake run the wires straight through the bottom and not use any conduit or adapters or anything of that sort so the first thing that we're going to be hooking up is our uh, our incoming power. So like I said, we're just doing one circuit and you can see the ground is really long here. Um, and that's because, so you want the ground to be about four or five inches longer than your other wires um, because the ground is way up over here. Let me point with this over here on the side. So um, you need a little extra length. So we're gonna put this through and hook it up. All right, so what I'm doing now before I hook those up is just getting the uh, pigtails put on the incoming power. So we're just splitting it to two different ones, uh, two different wires by using the two pigtails and a wire nut. And that is shown right here on the diagram for a single circuit. All right, so we've installed the pigtails on here and now we're gonna go ahead and hook up our L1, which is our hotline, uh, these two wires to our pump and control breakers and then we'll hook our two neutrals to the N and N1 right there. I should probably point with this so you can see a little better, but we'll get them hooked up and you'll see what it looks like. All right, so we've got the, uh, the L1, L2 landed pump and control breakers right here. And uh, we've also got the N1 and N landed right here. And you can see those are installed right there. 
All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our pump hooked up. So that would be eight and nine, or uh, eight and seven here. And then we've got our three floats, the highest of the floats, six and five, and then the middle of four and three, and then the lowest float, uh, two and one. So we'll just work our way this direction. So if you are using uh, two floats here, uh, then you would just have uh, four and one and six and five. And those are all numbered in the panel you can see here. So it makes it very simple and straightforward either direction you go. All right, so we've pulled our pump cable through. We're gonna land our ground right here on this lug. And then we'll go ahead and hook the other two wires up. All right, so we've got the pump hooked up. We've got the white wire or the neutral going to eight, the hot wire going to, or L1 going to seven, and the ground of course is hooked up. Now we're ready to bring our three floats in. All right, so just a reminder, the first float we're gonna be hooking up to six and five is gonna be our highest float. This would be our alarm float. So let's get that one wired in right now. So when you're inserting these wires, you wanna be sure to push them all the way up until they just don't go up any farther. And another thing to remember with float switches is um, in this configuration, it really doesn't matter which wire goes to which side. Um, so you, I could have flip-flopped these and the, the panel will still work just fine. Uh, but, you know, we'll just stick with the white and black pattern. All right, so the next float we're gonna be hooking up here, this is gonna be our middle float. This is the pump on float. All right, and lastly, we're gonna hook up our final float, which is gonna be the low level float or the pump off float. All right, so now we've got everything hooked up and we're ready for operation. We can go ahead and kick this thing into automatic, not manual, uh, though you could do manual if you wanted to test the pumps and, and fire up the breakers. Because we've now got our pump hooked up, we got our L1, pigtailed here and hooked into pump and control. Uh, we've got our neutrals pigtailed and hooked into N and N1. We've got our uh, pump hooked into eight and seven and grounded over here at this lug. We've got our alarm float at uh, six and five, our pump on float at four and three, and finally our pump off float at two and one. All right, so that's all folks. Thanks for joining us today on another great video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. New videos every Tuesday and Friday. We'll catch you next time.